This is the Crowd Crux Crowdfunding Podcast with With Sal Sal Brigman, Brigman. where we cover everything you need to know to To launch launch a successful crowdfunding campaign. campaign. We speak with proven entrepreneurs who've raised money from the crowd and want to teach you how to do the same. Stay tuned because we're about to reveal how to launch your dream project with your host, Sal Brigman. Before we get started with this podcast episode, I want to take a second to introduce you to my friends at FulfillRight. If you need help shipping out your Kickstarter or Indiegogo perks or rewards, FulfillRight is the absolute best company for you. I've been working with them for a while and I can vouch for their services. They make it dead simple and take all of the headache out of shipping out all of those boxes, all of those orders to your backers and your customers. If you want to check them out, go to fulfillright.com at F-U-L-F-I-L-L-R-I-T-E.com. What up, crowdfunders? Salvador Brigman here. Welcome back to the Crowdfunding Demystified podcast. And today's podcast episode is not about crowdfunding. Today's episode is actually an excerpt, excerpt, excerpt of this new book that I have coming out called Blogging for Beginners. So this is a book is going to show you how to start a blog, how to launch a blog, how to get traffic, how to monetize it, um, how to grow your subscriber base, and really how to work from home, travel the world, and also develop multiple income streams, which can support you, it can support your family. Um, this, this entire book is sharing with you all the lessons I've accumulated over the last 12 years, having built up crowdcrux.com. So the excerpt today is going to um, actually tell you a little bit more of the story of me deciding on the Crowdcrux domain name, what it was like back then in 2012, Um, And it's going to share with you, I think, also the the beginnings of what is possible for you. If I can go out there as a university student and I can launch a blog, not really knowing what I'm doing, not having very much information or education when it comes to um, selling myself or presenting myself online, if I can do that and and also turn this into a full-time job, uh, earning a full-time income from blogging, you can do the same thing much faster and much more easily than I was able to. That's sort of my my message here is that blogging is not something that's mysterious or something that is relegated to you know the fringes of society where only a small number of people can be successful. The real reason that most bloggers are not successful has nothing to do with their potential. It has nothing to do with their skill sets. It simply has to do with how they approach blogging, how they view it, the education they have access to, and also their commitment level. Are you actually passionate? Are you actually hungry? Are you actually interested in putting out new blog articles on a consistent basis? Not everyone is. So with this book, I want to hand to you a passport to an entirely different world. With blogging, the great thing about it, I mean, the thing I love most, I'm quite honest, about the lifestyle is the fact that your income is not tied to an office. It's not tied to a traditional nine to five job. It's not tied to some big company, some big organization that you're working for. Instead, when you're a blogger, you're able to work wherever you want. You can work from home. You can work from a different country. You can work from a cafe down the street. You can really set your own hours. There's a tremendous amount of flexibility that comes with being a blogger. Now, on the flip side, in addition to this flexibility, you also need to have your own goals. and You have to be um, have a little bit more self-starter in that way. But once you get through that period of setting up the blog, a lot of the ways that I share with you to generate traffic are actually consistent. You'll continually get consistent traffic to the blog and you won't have to do very much. I actually have a blog not related to, to this industry that I only wrote four articles on last year, and it continued to receive thousands and thousands of visitors to that website. So the cool thing about this art is that once you learn the simple strategies, you can sort of put take your hands off the wheel, and it sort of takes itself on autopilot, 
And if you want to, you can continue to grow the block. You can continue to build the business and you can hire people. You can hire assistants. You can do really whatever you want. But if you want to have more of a, a smaller company or a smaller business, something that's just primarily you, you can also do that. It's up to you how you decide to structure your lifestyle. All I want to do is give you the passport to be able to enter that world. This is kind of the world that's like talked about um, by Four Hour Work Week. It's talked about by some of those other like get rich, get rich uh, quick schemes and, and things that people are kind of trying to push out there into the universe. But um, I actually have found the Four Hour Workbook to be one of the more credible ones on the subject. And I discovered Tim Ferriss after I started the blog, but uh, he says a lot of very true things that once you set up an online business, your workload dramatically decreases. So you can spend you know a small part of your time, actually part time, building the blog. And then also spend part time on that blog, you know, every single week, just a small amount of time maintaining it. And you can live a relatively healthy lifestyle. You can live a lifestyle in many major cities and, and be very, you know, happy and, and be able to do other things with your time, whether that's staying at home with your kids, it could be picking up a new hobby, it could be going out there and, and trying to assemble, you know, get new skills doing something you've always wanted to, like learn how to play guitar. It could even be to build another business, to build an entirely new company. I've chosen what to do with my time, which is to, to continue to grow my own company and to put out um, more education and training and also get better at different things in my own life, like podcasting or like YouTube videos, so that I can add even more valuable um, stuff to the audience. I started with blogging in 2012, then I progressed to podcasting, and then I progressed to YouTube. So every single year, I'm trying to add more things and more skill sets so I can continue to communicate uh, very effectively to you. I can continue to educate, put out good quality education into the universe. That's my goal, but you could have a very different one. So the reason I share this is that this has been a, a journey for me, and I've sort of, got, sort of gotten to the point in my life where I feel like it's time to give back and it's time to share a little bit of, of this knowledge that I've accumulated in the sphere of blogging and online business. I want to sort of expose many of those people out there who are like, oh, you can make like six figures easily with blogging. While you can, it's not really something that's realistic for a beginner. You can make very healthy income, and I share with you how to do that, but it's with a complete different mindset change when it comes to approaching blogging. You're not thinking of like making six figures from advertising. You can create multiple income streams in order to hit a target like that. So I hope you enjoy this excerpt of the podcast, or sorry, of the, the audio book for this, this blogging book. And if you want to grab a copy, you can go to crowdcrux.com slash blogging audio that is c-r-o-w-d-c-r-u-x dot com slash blogging audio hope you enjoy it introduction it was literally insane i was 24 years old and i felt like i was rich i could go anywhere at any time and i had no one to answer to at a moment's notice i could book a trip to brazil spain south africa or france what's more I'd make money while I was traveling. The catch was, I wasn't rich, nowhere close. Don't get me wrong, I was making good money. I was living in New York City. I could afford to party, eat out, and even save money, but my time wasn't tied to my money. I was making money in my sleep and not even trying. It sounds like one of those stories behind some kind of scam, right? I thought so too. I never really bought into the book titles like The 4-Hour Workweek. Rich Dad, Poor Dad, or Think and Grow Rich. I thought they were scammy marketers trying to sell poor saps the dream of getting rich quickly. Real results take decades to achieve and only come at the price of ignoring your friends, family, and lover, right? Why then was I the exception? Why was it that I was thriving when many of the people I went to school with were struggling to get by in a competitive job marketplace? When I talked about my job with relatives and family members, they'd raise their eyebrows in surprise. They'd look at me doubtfully and say, and you can make money at that? Of course I could. After all, so many people online were making a killing. In fact, one of the friends that I grew up with was making lots of money with a website 
that ranked Minecraft servers. This website was getting millions of views a month, and here's the catch. He was younger than me. What I was doing online seemed completely obvious. Anyone could do it, but when I explained it, I would always get blank stares. People couldn't comprehend the fact that I was able to set up a blog so easily and rake in cash even when I was sleeping. I had to be lying or doing something illegal. Otherwise, everyone would be doing it. After a few years, I came to fully understand why my existence was so foreign to them. I finally got into why it didn't make sense and would never make sense. I'll sum it up for you with a very simple formula. Average beliefs plus average actions plus average commitment equals average results. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, average individuals in the United States bring in about $49,000 per year from the age of 34 to 44. That's a standard nine to five job where you're working 40 hours per week. I made more money than that in my second year of blogging and I didn't have to work all that much either. If you want to succeed in a way that other people aren't, you have to be willing to go outside of the mainstream. You can't just follow the system like everyone else. You need empowering beliefs, mentors, and a high level of commitment towards your dream. You got to get outside of your comfort zone. It might seem weird at first, but you must be willing to explore different ways of thinking about the world. You have to take actions that the mainstream considers risky. In life, you can either develop a plan for your own life or have other people develop a plan for you. You'll quickly become a pillar building their dream rather than your own. Just think, how are you spending your time each day? Are you managing other people and organizing them towards your goals? Or are you the one who is being managed? Our social conditioning in our society is focused on two things. One, making us great consumers. Two, making us great employees. Don't believe me? You better listen up. Every single emotion that you feel on a daily basis guides your purchasing behaviors. Marketers like myself are very aware of this. It's one reason we promote stories, values, and lifestyles that are meant to stir up emotions that will eventually lead to a purchasing decision. What do young girls do when they realize the importance of beauty, popularity, and boys? They go out and buy makeup. They buy expensive clothes and jewelry. They attempt to look desirable to the opposite sex, and they seek approval from the same sex. The majority of women out there are not comfortable with their looks. Why do you think eating disorders are so prevalent? These negative emotions are riled up by marketers and our own social conditioning in order to turn us into obedient consumers. Think about it. As young men, we're sold stories like The Wolf of Wall Street, Pretty Woman, and The Social Network that make us want to go out there and earn a lot of money. With money, we can finally win the attention of girls and gain respect from our peers. We'll even be able to party it up because that's what you do in your 20s. And of course, that's what you need to do to get laid. This negative mentality fuels the consumption of alcohol, expensive goods, and oddly enough, it creates hardworking employees. I'm not saying that this is all a conspiracy. I'm just saying this is how our society operates. Let's take music as an example. So many of the popular rap songs and mainstream music pieces talk about going out, hitting up chicks or chasing boys, and getting drunk in the club. Just look at the lyrics of Time of Our Lives by Pitbull. And I quote, I knew my rent was going to be later about a week ago. I worked my ass off, but I still can't pay it though. But I got just enough to get up in this club, have me a good time before my time is up. Hey, let's get it now. If I owned a club, I would play that song all of the time. Young guys who barely have enough money to pay rent will spend their cash trying to buy a hot girl a drink and a shot for themselves because they got to party it up. This is just one example of how our culture promotes consumption. There are countless others. Marketers prey on negative emotions, promote stories, and sell lifestyles that result in a thriving consumer base. Our social conditioning also trains us to be great employees. From a very young age, 
We are taught in school to be good at key skills that have very little real practicality when it comes to actual business or financial management. When is the last time you used geometry, trigonometry, calculus, or applied your knowledge about ancient Victorian literature? Chances are, it's been a while. I'm not saying that these topics don't have value. I actually love literature and stories. I'm just saying that the education system is set up to churn out employees, not business owners. Think about it. What do schools and colleges prize? They brag about standardized test scores, Ivy League acceptances, employment rates, kids who got into their first college choice. And of course, they emphasize getting as much education as possible. Don't worry about student loans. Go and get that graduate degree in ancient Chinese philosophy. Want to set up a business? Go and get an MBA. Need to make more money? Get a PhD. We're taught that higher education equates to more money. When we get that money, we can then go out there and buy happiness with that big flat screen TV with same as cash financing that only requires a low, low monthly payment. All the while, you're making expensive private colleges money, you're making the TV business rich, and you're making bankers wealthy with your low monthly payments. Who's really getting the best deal out of this situation? What makes all this even more absurd is that college tuition is at a record high. We're paying more for college degrees than ever before in history. Couple that with the easy student loan financing, and it's a recipe for a bubble. The funny thing is, this entire system is justified by the fact that you're going to get a high-paying job after college. Good joke, right? When you imagine all of the forces conspiring to keep you living a plain life as a thoughtless consumer and obedient employee, it can seem hopeless. It's like this massive tidal wave that you are powerless to stop. Soon, you'll surrender to its power and be carried down to the depths of the cold, heartless ocean. I'm happy to tell you that that doesn't have to happen. You can break free from this system, and I can show you exactly how to do it. It's not going to be easy. You're going to have to read every single word of this entire book, take massive action, and adopt a completely new mindset. But if you do, you'll finally gain that sense of financial and emotional freedom that I too have always craved. This book is going to show you exactly how to start your own blog and turn it into a full-time cash-generating machine. I'm going to give you the keys to the kingdom, which will unlock this entirely new career that you never thought possible. You'll quickly discover how to get traffic, subscribers, readers, and build up passive income streams. I'm even going to share with you the most profitable niches online today and how you can get a slice of the pie. Well, I'm going to help you get your career back on track. This book is about more than just your job or even your passion. It's about freedom, the ability to do what you want, when you want, without a boss lingering over your shoulder. It's the freedom that comes with being able to take many retirements and spend months in a foreign country. It's the freedom you'll feel when you don't have to depend on a paycheck to be able to feed your family. If you are a mother, a father, or just looking to contribute to your family, you'll also find that blogging is a great way to bring extra income from the comfort of your home. My name is Sal. I wrote this book, and I can't wait for you to get started. Good luck. P.S. Don't forget to drop me a line and share your story at salvadorbrigman.com slash contact. Hope you enjoyed that excerpt of the audiobook Blogging for Beginners. This book will walk you through how to start, set up, and launch a blog, and also how to monetize it, how to get more traffic to it, how to grow your subscriber base. It's a comprehensive book called Blogging for Beginners, which is now available on Audible. If you want to check out the Audible version, you can go to crowdcrux.com slash blogging audio. That is C-R-O-W-D-C-R-U-X dot com slash blogging audio. Hope you enjoy.